Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah. Wa sharu la ilaha illallah. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala ba'd. Um this is regarding these uh, refutations of uh, Shadid Muhammad and uh his refutation of Musa Richardson and Musa Richardson's refutation of the NOI. Um, and uh, this, um, this is largely going to be addressed to Tahir Wyatt somewhat, more so to Shadid Muhammad, but more so than that to uh, Abu Iyad, who uh, wrote um, the correction, so to speak, for uh, Shadid Muhammad in defense of Musa Richardson. I only have one disagreement with Musa Richardson in his refutation, and that is that he left something out. When we refute people and we got proof, we're supposed to refute them. I get that. It's clear. But when we refute people, if there is something about them that is catchy or there's something that they're able to use to draw people in and we can see what it is, we should point that out. You see, when it comes to the Ahmadiyya, I'm going to be honest, Musa Richardson, uh, I'm pretty sure, even though I don't know much about him, I'm pretty sure Musa Richardson is not necessarily going to play favorites. I'm going to give him the benefit of that doubt, that benefit of the doubt. So he'll refute the Ahmadiyya, he'll refute the Aga Khani, he'll refute the Borelwi. Um, so when he refutes the NOI, it's nothing personal. And I don't think it's anything racial. I'm pretty sure it's not actually. Um, but I'm going to point this out to you Muslims, especially you uh, Salafis, more so than other Muslims. Mainly I'm going to address the Salafi community. Scholars or laymen, or just speakers, take your pick. I'm going to address you all in this. Now, how Tahir Wyatt screwed up was that he went to the nation and he was so diplomatic that he did not clarify the difference between us and the NOI, the nothing of Islam at all. There's no evidence, though, that he went back and did this again that I know of. I don't know of him repeating that same mistake. He did this in 2014 during Ramadan at that time. I did not uh, ever hear of him going back to them. He was approached. He didn't give the guy's name. I don't think he did. Um, he went once, and people immediately got to getting on his case, and he defended himself. But I don't know if I'm going back. And the corrections to how he should have done it are not what I take issue with. I mostly take issue with the tone, which is kind of accusatory. Even though he is a PhD in Akita, I'm aware of that. But I'm not aware of him going back and doing this again. Um, how Shadid Muhammad made a mistake was that he went to the nation's platform that same year. And I don't know what he said because I can't find the audio, but I confess that I don't know. But to go to the nation's platform, you don't want to retweet or repost Farrakhan's statements to those who do not know that you are clear about your differences. I myself, I'm a nobody. I have reposted and retweeted things that Farrakhan has said, but I usually say in the post, here's good information from Farrakhan, even though I'm not a follower, it would never advise you to follow him, never tell anyone to do it. Because we, we clearly, he and I have two different religions. But this is a good point that he's made. And I've seen others that would do the same thing. Sometimes a Muslim will post things that Farrakhan or someone else deviant has said because the particular point is good and the audience for which that person reposting knows that they are not the same as Farrakhan. But someone else will turn around and repost the reposter. And those who don't know the reposter will not know that they're different. And this is something that can happen, but this is confusion. The person reposting what a deviant says and happens to be correct will be posting to an audience that already knows this so they don't repeat the same thing. He and I are different, she and I are different, but here's a valid point. So they don't repeat it every time because the audience knows. <laughs> I do repeat it every time generally because... Um, well, mainly because of guys like you that do refutations of everybody, sometimes correctly and sometimes incorrectly. Um, but you, the refuters at manhash.com, screwed up. And the reason why is it's a little bit longer. Uh, I don't know Abu Iyad. You're the one that wrote this. I don't know you personally. Um, 
And so I'm not saying any of this with hatred. But look, you wrote down Musa Richardson, may Allah protect him, refuted and spoke about the nation of Islam on issues of Tawheed, Iman, and Kufr. He did not concern himself in his reputation with social issues, which is what Shadid and his likes are concerned with. Uh, excuse me, Ninja, but that is the problem. So don't defend Musa Richardson on that. So he addressed the shirk, so I join you in giving him credit for addressing the shirk. But he did not address the legitimate grievances the black community has, even to say that the NOI was addressing these grievances, therefore this, is, this has been the basis for their appeal to the black community, even to black folks who are Muslim. Had he, had he simply said that, had he simply said, their strength is this, and this is why they have this appeal, and we are not downplaying this, I would have shut the hell up. I wouldn't have said anything. But I listened to his refutation, and I couldn't hear anything like that. And like I said, I'm with you in giving him credit for refuting this shirk. Shirk is shirk. Doesn't matter who does it. <laughs> but, you see, he did, not, he did not point out that the NOI the nothing of Islam, is filling a void that the Salafi community is refusing to fill. I didn't say failing to fill. I said refusing to fill. Black people, along with everyone else, are victims of only one type of racism globally because there's only one in operation. That is white supremacy. <coughs> no one else has power to oppress whites as a category. So there's no black supremacy or Arab supremacy or subcontinental supremacy. Only white supremacy is global and everywhere. It's like Coca-Cola. <laughs> and the Salafis don't know they're following it, but they are doing so subconsciously, which I will try to explain later, inshallah. Ironically, Musa Richardson is very unlikely to follow white supremacy. And I seriously doubt that he himself had any white supremacist intention for clarifying uh, the disbelief of the NOI. So I'm not blaming him for white supremacy or even for following it. No, no. I'm going to give credit where it's due. Usually when white folks come into Islam, they don't follow white supremacy, even subconsciously. They go against it, usually. Now, uh, you wrote down what this exposes is the hamia, meaning rage, zeal, and passion of Jahili that was found with Arabs on tribal grounds and which came in the way for many of them in accepting Islam. This is what Shadid is suffering from here. As in he has the same quality and trait, but on racial grounds instead of tribal ones. That is to say that it bothers him more that Musa Richardson spoke about them for their kufr and, and, and karmata. Then it bothers him that they were upon kufr and karmata, all because they are black and Musa is white. Excuse me again, Ninja. The NOI is wrong for the shirk. We agreed on that. But no black person in the world at this point is wrong for their reactionary biases. And this includes the NOI. Because why? Well, the, reaction, the, the bias is reactionary. When we are re biased against other people, and that includes when we're biased against Arabs, which is increasing, by the way. When we are biased against Arabs or white folks or subcontinentals, it is because of their anti-black, pro-white biases, no matter what whites have done to them and no matter what black folks have not done to them. So we're actually right in these biases we have. We may not always do the right thing, but, you know, we're right to not really trust uh, other folks that much. Well, guess what? The NOI and its bias is not also wrong either. Now, they are the only group even calling themselves Muslim that addresses the issues and the struggles of black folks even in other countries, which is the same issue that the Salafi community will not touch adequately. The Salafi community has reputations against Asabiya, Ansuriya. That's good. Um, you know, tribalism, nationalism, racism in general, I, I say racial bias, but they do not have adequate pointed refutations of white supremacy, which is the only real form of racism in the planet right now. They don't, they, I can't find it. I know I've been looking for it. Ain't no Salafis talking about this. And every time a non-Salafi scholar does say something about it, shortly after there's a refutation on that scholar, usually for something else. But honestly, I never heard of any refutations on Omar Suleiman till he addressed white supremacy. He didn't address bias just in general, a blanket uh, uh, statement that doesn't get to the issue as it is today. No, he addressed straight up anti-black white supremacist bias in the Muslim community. He addressed it. Got on it. Shortly after that, there's a refutation on him. Really? That's how y'all roll? Noman Ali Khan said something about black and noble. Shortly after that, there's a refutation on him for other things he said. How come these things are not, um, you know, honestly, straight up? 
Why is it that there are refutations on them after this for some things they said having to do with religion and Akita, but these don't surface until they come up and say something against white supremacy? I've noticed this pattern. And even Hamza Yusuf, the refutations on him. I, I get it. I agree. I mean, I believe you me. I was like, what took him so long when they started writing refutations on him years ago? You know, because before 9-11, he was like super strong. After 9-11, I think somebody punked him. As we can see, but guess what? He said some anti-black, pro-white supremacist BS earlier in 2016. No refutation on him from the Salafis. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. No, 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 no. You slipped up. You have failed as a community to address this issue adequately. You said, we certainly do not downplay these issues which, which must be tackled. That these are injustices and wrongs is clear to most people. As for the misguidance of the nation of Kufr, then to a lot of people it is not apparent because of the deception of this group. Yes, you do. Uh, meaning, yes, you do downplay the issues. Now, you individually, Abu Iyad, <laughs> personally, um, and, and maybe you at munhaj.com, I, I don't know. Maybe you don't downplay the issues. And many Salafi Caucasians and many Salafis of African descent do not downplay those issues. But the Salafi community as a whole, including its scholars, both in the West and in the East alike, do downplay these issues routinely. You act like it's a part of the men hedge to do so. I ain't saying it is a part of the men hedge, but you avoid it as though avoidance is the part of the men hedge. <laughs> no, that, that is true. We do downplay these issues a lot. And it is true that one is more open and obvious and another one is a deception. However, this sentence here is only true if by we you mean the writers specifically of this. If that's the case, fine. Please, um, please put on your front page and send out to the Salafi community and scholars refutations specifically against white supremacy and pro-white and anti-black colorism around the world. Please refute this. Please tackle this. Please embarrass people about this. Not necessarily by name, but do this if you don't downplay the issues. All right. Um, yes, in closing, Tahir Wyatt would have been smarter had he gone about it a different way. Yes, Shadid Muhammad would have been smarter to use his own platform to give dawah to the NOI. But now that's already being done. You see, the NOI is down to something like only half a million followers, while the number of those who left the NOI for revealed Islam is far beyond that. And it is to the point that Islam has already touched the household of every African-American, and increasingly so uh, in the households of every African uh, in the Caribbean and in black Brazil. And whosoever is African diasporan and is not Muslim is related to a Muslim. So yes, Shadid could have been clear about disagreeing selectively and specifically with Musas, not mentioning that the NOI had filled the void and that was their appeal even to the Muslims and that he was not disagreeing with Musas' take on their shirk. To be fair, he could have done that. But you know what? A lot of shayukh and scholars and their students in Saudi Arabia and other parts of the Middle East are sitting up having wet dreams at night about white European women knowing that very few of them are Muslim. And if they can marry one, they would, but they would jump over a brown Arab woman who's already Muslim. And they would definitely jump over a tropical African woman who was already Muslim to marry a European woman if she's just friendly to Muslims. You didn't know about that, did you? Now, many of you are going to say, well, you know, this guy Blackheart, first off, look at his name, and then he's sitting up and uh, uh, blasting the personal preferences in women that many people have in the Middle East. Niggas, it's not a personal preference. It's a cultural preference. And what does this cultural preference lean towards? It leaned towards specifically European women who look like the oppressors and slave masters and colonizers of the world and the planet. And the men who went and colonized and enslaved and raped the world came from women that looked like them and were raised by women that looked like them, married women that looked like them. Yeah, and you want the women that look like the ones who raised them because you have an inferiority complex. That's really what it boils down to. No, no, no. When the Arab world and the subcontinent have a preference for the whitest of women, and that's not a personal preference, that's a cultural preference. Why does the entire culture prefer the women of the oppressor over the victims? Even over women that, that come from their own phenotype. Why? Inferiority complexes. And Salafis have it too. 
Stop ignoring this issue. You're taking whiteness for granted, your own whiteness in a sense. <laughs> and, and honestly, what you all don't seem to understand is that Caucasians who become Muslim, especially if they become, well, the Caucasians who become Muslim at all, period, Sufi or Salafi or anything in between, look at you, when they realize this, they look at you and they say, oh my goodness, you got an inferiority complex, what's wrong with you? They look at you and say, how stupid can these people be? You didn't know that, did you? Black folk been hip to this, and we sick of it. <laughs> I'm getting sick of it, too. You want to refute uh, Shadid Muhammad? No, 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 no. Mm -mm, no, no. First, you got to go and you got to look at the issue itself. And you got to say, okay, Musa, you left something out. Okay, now, Shadid, uh, you may want to be clear about what you're angry about. About the ignoring of um, police brutality on certain issues. That's fine. But... You may want to be clear about that. However, the way that all three parties have acted in this case, now all four parties, I'm sorry, Abu Yad and whoever supported him in writing this, Shadid, Tahir, and Musa, all of them need correction in this case. And I'm sure I'm going to need correction for something, but I'm not going to sit up and make that mistake in front of you all openly, knowingly. But all have a correction that needs to be made. Musa should have said, here is their strong point, this is their appeal. What I'm talking about here is the shirk. However, the tackling of these issues is something we can learn from. That would have been the right thing and the mature thing to say. Um, Tahir White, I don't really know much about Tahir to be honest, but I would say it would have been better if Tahir had been more suspicious from the beginning. I would say the same thing for Shadid. It would have been better if he'd been more suspicious of them from the beginning. <laughs> but, um, and it would have been better if Shadid had said to Musa, listen, Musa, uh, my question is, if you're going to talk about this, then could you please at least address the issues that, the, that their audience, the NOI's audience, has to have addressed in order for them to listen. They need these issues to be addressed because they're pressing issues. <laughs> Mothers are losing their sons and fathers are losing their daughters behind police brutality and white supremacy. We cannot ignore these issues. Could you please address them too? So that people can listen to a person of Tawheed addressing these issues as opposed to having to listen to somebody of Kufan and Shirk addressing these issues. <laughs> that would have been the better thing for Shadid to say. But I'm not going to jump down Shadid's throat. I'm going to jump down the throats of the Salafis who keep ignoring the issue, want to sweep white supremacy under the rug, or just give a blanket address to discrimination in general, but not addressing the specific. And listen, 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 <laughs> Salafis. Seriously, I'm talking to scholars and to the layman. Salafis, real, for real. Oftentimes, we say the right things for the wrong reason. And this is where we go wrong. <laughs> One of the things that we say that is right, but for the wrong reason, or we misapply it, is that the medicine against injustice and for justice starts with Tawheed. That's true. But we got to start applying this to specific issues as they are. You can't sit up and say, okay, now I got Tawheed, but you know what? I still want to marry that Italian woman and give her dawah, hoping she'll become Muslim while I jump over this darker skinned woman who's already Muslim. No, 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 better yet, while I jump over these darker skinned women who are already Muslim, I want to marry that Italian woman. You got an inferiority complex, bottom line. <laughs> straight like that. Why? You want to breed yourself. Let's, let's, let's replace Italian in this example with Swedish, all right? Because you see what I'm getting at. The bottom line is this, this preference for specifically the European phenotype in women is because what you want to do is you want to breed your children and your grandchildren to be more European looking. That is an idea not taken from Islam or Tawheed for that matter, but rather taken from eugenics, American eugenics, which influenced, guess who, outside of the United States? It influenced Hitler. You're taking the same idea as Hitler, dummies. Whether you knew it or not. Look, the other thing that you say that is right oftentimes, but you say it for the wrong reasons is, you say that the, the worst Muslim is better than the best disbeliever. Theologically, that is true. When it comes to worship, yes, you do not want to take the religion of the disbeliever with a good character. You want to learn some of the character traits, but you don't want to take their religion, naturally, I get it. And you do want to take the religion even from the worst Muslim, 
but you don't want to take the character traits. Now, in that regard, it's true, but we need to explain this. Just like a lot of things in the Hadiths are explained, such as people committing suicide when they're Muslim. You know, the, the Hadith about them is explained so that people don't think it means that you leave Islam by committing suicide and you automatically go to hell and you're there forever. You, that, this was explained. Well, guess what? You need to explain the statement. The best Kafir is worse than the worst Muslim. Okay, explain it. In terms of religion, yes. Theology, yes. Because they're not committing the sin that Allah has promised to never forgive. Okay, yes. But this does not mean that the Muslims can sit on their haunches and act with the lowest basis character and make da'wah. You can't do it. Muslims doing this and using this as an excuse are the reason that many of us who are Muslim have relatives that will never accept Islam. They cannot accept being a brother to a Muslim who talks this religion, but he smokes. And he smokes around kids. And he wants to marry the European woman that ain't Muslim. Or whether she's Muslim or not. You know, trying to breed himself to be more European like the colonizers, which is a very Hitler, uh, actually a very eugenicist idea, going back even further than Hitler. I can't accept somebody like this as a brother. You got white supremacist ideas? You following white supremacy in your behavior, but you preaching Islam? No, no. So people doing this are the reason that other people remain lost and, re and refuse to accept that which is salvation. Look. <laughs> Islam and Tawheed are the roots of justice in the land. But there are disbelievers that are fair and just in their actions and there are Muslims who suck. So we can say that the best comprehensive medicine against injustice and for justice is Tawheed, but we fail to apply it. So let's be honest and admit that now. We fail to apply it. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went against certain sensitivities and cultural mores of his time because they were wrong. You claim to follow this example. Follow it. Go ahead and tell people, no. If you individually, only you wants to marry, uh, let's say this particular woman from Sweden or Denmark, but your brother wants, he prefers a woman from Kenya, and your other brother would prefer somebody like, let's say from Sri Lanka to marry, then it's a personal preference. But when many of you just take for granted that European women, you know, the colonizing women, are the most beautiful in the world, and that African women, you know, the least colonizing women in the planet, are the, most, are the least beautiful, right off the bat, directly, even though Eve was dark-skinned and black. This is no longer a personal preference. It is a cultural inferiority complex. Just as, that's one example. There are other examples to use, but that's one. Confront the people, go against certain mores, and you know what? I've talked to people that are, you know, really pious, big beards, know what call on their shamogs. You know what? They would never go against certain customs of the time. I mean, really, you want to address, many of you don't want to address this issue. And the reason is because you're not equipped, because you know doggone well that if you were not from the Hazmi or the Salovi tribes and you let your daughter marry a man that is, people are going to talk about you. That's the real truth. Unfortunately, it's going to have to be that until people understand the concerns of black folks, the way that they kind of understand the concerns of Palestinians and the way that they understand, um, well, yeah, let's start with Palestine. Until they can understand that and understand that the, the ones whose phenotypes they adore so much, meaning the Europeans, are the oppressors of the planet as a group, I mean, as a category. And that the ones whose phenotypes they love the least are the Africans who, um, who are also the least likely to oppress anybody else. And we're actually not going outside of Africa to oppress anybody else. Till the day that the, 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 the Muslims understand this, you are unqualified to delve into debates wherein white supremacy is an issue. You need to fuck the shuck up. Close your mouth. Don't say anything. <laughs> Shadid Muhammad said that the scholars in the Middle East cannot relate to the struggles of black Americans. That's not a racist statement. No, it's not a racist statement. Why do the scholars in the Middle East refuse to relate? I mean, you know, did you know that you all say things that sound just like what white American disbelievers say that are racist in the United States? Did you all know this? When we say black lives matter, they say all lives matter. Okay, 
go to a funeral of somebody who died from cancer and then say, well, there are other diseases too. <laughs> go do that. You wouldn't do it, would you, dummy? Well, th th that's what they say. So when you turn around and we say black lives matter, and you say all lives matter, you are again saying the right thing for the wrong reason. Now, I'm not for the Black Lives Matter movement specifically, meaning the three women and the white guy who hit it, because they have another agenda. But the statement or the intention of Black Lives Matter, no, I got no, no quarrel with it. It's only black lives and Latin American lives and Native American lives that are being treated cheaply by police officers. It's the only ones. So, no, don't tell me white lives matter. The law already says they matter, and the law is treated like they matter. The law says that black lives matter. The law says that all lives matter. The law is not applied as though all lives matter. So you are going to have to understand that, unfortunately, you're going to have to start seeing things specifically from a black point of view. And I'm in a black militant point of view. You're going to have to learn to see it. You're going to have to learn to understand and sympathize with black folks who hate non-blacks before you can really tackle this issue of white supremacy. You're not willing to see it that way. So guess what, dummies? You are not qualified to tackle this issue because you cannot relate to the struggles of black people. That's the truth of the matter. If you can start to stop taking your whiteness for granted, stop seeing yourselves as white, stop identifying with white Europe on a subconscious level, get rid of white supremacy, you can at least confront your subconscious white supremacy, which manifests in your preference for white women over even your own women. That is the beginning. That's the start. Then when you understand why it is that I will never marry a white woman regardless of her religion, and it's not even out of hatred, and you don't can blame me for it and condemn me for it, <laughs> then, then you are capable of relating to the struggles of black Americans. You don't know the history. I don't blame you for that. They don't teach you that in the Middle East. But if I try to tell you the history, I know how you scholars are a lot of times about this particular subject, not every other, other subject. I listen, you teach me, and I learn. On this particular subject, when I attempt to explain it to many of you, you don't listen. You want to cut me off and interrupt me and whoever else is trying to teach you. Why? You're just trying to defend white supremacy and you don't even know it. When you cease defending white supremacy in any form, in any, even down to the smallest of preferences, then you begin, you don't finish, but you begin to become qualified to start addressing the issues of white supremacy. You have failed in this regard. The entire Ummah has failed. But for people calling themselves Salafi to fail in this, this is a doggone shame. It's just downright stupid in my opinion. I hope that this message has been of benefit. Assalamu alaikum.